Welcome to Chapter 4 of Marketing 570, Integrated Marketing Communications. The topic of this uh, session is uh, covering the area of social media. This is presented by Social Professor David Gray. First of all, let, let's have a look at uh, the learning objectives for this session. Uh, we want to have a look at the consumption of social media in Australia and internationally. Have a look at the, the um, qualities of social media advertising, the different kinds of theories, the differences between social media platforms, and have a look at the social media campaigns using various kinds of analytics. First of all, if we have a look at what we mean by social media, we're talking about a group of internet-based applications that build on the ideological and technological foundations of Web 2.0 and that allow the creation and exchange of user-generated content. So particularly we're looking at the creation of user-generated uh, content and the exchange of that content amongst mem members of those social media platforms. <clears throat> so we're talking about the, the democratization of knowledge and we're talking about the transformation from content, content consumers to content producers. And this has been a fundamental shift uh, caused by social media over the last 10 years. A major component in social media usage are these social network sites and their platforms, usually web-based, that enable people to build social networks or social relations with others who have similar interests backgrounds and connections. So the majority of, of internet users have access to social network sites uh, and almost 100% have access to uh, Facebook, uh, which is the major, uh, the overwhelming uh, major social network site. And uh, with the average person using it more than 20 times per week or 18 minutes per session. <clears throat> Some of the major statistics from HubSpot for social media usage uh, is uh, interestingly that less than half of marketeers think that their Facebook efforts are, are effective uh, and I think uh, these statistics are still uh, relevant today as well. So some of the other facts are Facebook posts with images see 2.3 times more engagement than those without images. So the message here is include images with your Facebook toast. It's also the, the most engaging of users with 70% logging on daily uh, and more than uh, nearly half using it several times a day. So amazingly, 63% of Facebook and Twitter users say each platform serves as a source for news about events and issues outside the realm of friends and, and family. So nearly three quarters use Facebook for professional purposes uh, and uh, Facebook has over a billion users. <clears throat> Linked on the other hand is more a professional network. 25% of adult users uh, use LinkedIn. Uh, it has higher rates of usage amongst 30 to 40, 40 nine-year-olds compared to 18 to 29 year olds so it's for people who are a little bit more experienced nearly half are college graduates and um, uh, there are somewhere between 450 and 500 million uh, users currently on, on linkedin so we know that social media uh, presents a pathway to purchasing and if we if we have a look at the um, the census uh, later survey of Australia, <clears throat> we see that the, the major uh, sources for information searching uh, were in, in 2017 were clothing and fashion and apl appliances. However, since uh, 2014, we've seen uh, a major um, movement away from just clothing and fashion. Uh, to a much broader range uh, and you can see that uh, for example movies and TV shows uh, in terms of searching for those have accelerated rapidly and this could be due to the increase of uh, pay TV services such as uh, Netflix. Majority of people uh, 
conducting their research on a mobile device. And you can see that this has increased from 6% in 2011 to 52% uh, in 2017. And this has been associated with a corresponding decline in um, search used on computers from 79% in 2011 to 35%. If we have a look at the usage of social media by business, we see that there's some of the major reasons it's used for are uh, to interact and develop new relationships with customers, partners and suppliers, to seek input from customers, to improve customer service, accelerating problem solving, it also helps to facilitate innovation, building brand, and also the ability to interact with employees uh, in a whole bunch of new ways. Now, there's some mixed uh, feeling, mixed findings in, re in relation to advertising and social media. Uh, attitudes towards advertising and social network sites was most positive when it added to social capital. And we, th we think about the definition of social capital call it a sociological term for the anticipated collective or economic advantages that arise when individuals or groups cooperate. At its heart, it's the concept of social networks having value. This is something that's uh, been, he been heavily explored during the last five, five years in particular. One of the very few longitudinal studies uh, of teenagers advertising avoidance on social network sites demonstrated the growing maturity of both the teenager and the medium. So back in 2007, teenagers had little experience of social network sites. By 2011, the same group, now young adults, understood behavioural targeting and were much more, more concerned about their privacy of their, of their site. And we noticed that Facebook in recent years has, <clears throat> has increasingly focused on the privacy aspects and given uh, the users much greater control to um, modify their privacy concerns. So basically, we get to advertising avoidance, the avoidance of advertising by effective cognitive and behavioral or, or mechanical uh, means. And this is something which some of the social network sites have focused on uh, more, more recently. Uh, but still, there's been a greater incidence of advertising and therefore we've seen the revenues of Facebook grow dramatically over the last couple of years because they've been putting more, much more advertising and much better targeting uh, onto their social network site. <clears throat> Some of the theories to explain social media. So we know that social media, by definition, is inherently social. There are a lot of... Um, many, many theories that relate to self-identity and the way we interact with others. So a number of theories uh, I think we'll talk about during this session are self-efficacy and outcome expectations, knowledge sharing and social capital. Uh, we have a look at the issues of self-contributity self theory uh, and um, leading to self-enhancement endorsement and also leading to e-word of mouth. We talk about knowledge sharing and social capital. So basically these self-networking sites allow us to express our sense of self or who we are through what we buy. And when that brand meaning is consistent with our own self-identity, then we transfer meaning to our self. And this is basically what we mean by self-congruity theory. I mean, the principle is that if we perceive our self-image as congruent with a brand, uh, then we're much more likely to, um, to, buy, to buy into that brand. There are different kinds of congruency. There are th basically three types of con congruency. First of all, we have brand personality congruency, and that is that uh, there's a, an alignment between uh, the brand itself and our own personality. Then we have brand user imagery congruity, where the consumers perceive similarity between him or herself and the typical users of the brand. And then we have brand usage uh, uh, imagery uh, congruity, where the commonality of brand consumption within the community and the way in which the consumer would typically use use the brand. <clears throat> if we talk about congruency online. 
So basically, we don't even have to buy the product for the brand to reflect in its glory. And uh, what this means is that we can share an electronic brand, post a product related message or advocate for an online advertisement to express our self concept. So what happens is that when others uh, endorse us for this act of sharing, then we have self enhancement. And this is a motive for internet user sharing. And, uh, and um, that is by publicly advocating a uh, an online advertisement, consumers can use the symbolic value of the product or brand to express their self-concept just as well as they can act as if they actually consume the product. This is when we get into e-word of mouth and specifically we're talking about the transmittal of information from one person to another via, via electronic communication using such methods as online customer reviews uh, or blogs. So when we talk about congruency, we're talking about knowledge sharing, uh, which is driven by self-efficacy uh, and outcome expectation. So basically, we're sharing knowledge. It builds up our self-identity. Uh, and some of the likely determinants in the social media environment are personal factors, such as self-efficacy and, and expected outcomes and environmental factors. So think about what we mean by self-efficacy. It's the belief in your ability to do something. So it's a self-confidence, uh, the belief in your own identity. And when we share things online, we have an expectation. Uh, and um, it's, it's, um, it's to what extent do we judge the, the likely consequences of the behavior of, of sharing? So how do we tie all this together? So the theory suggests Consumers go online because of structural factors. They're killing in or filling time because of content factors. So they want to share information or they um, achieve some kind of entertainment value and socialization factors. So they want to connect with others. So they occupy themselves, they share information and that and or they want to connect with others. So they share knowledge if they have the competence to do so, which relates to their self-efficacy. And if they perceive the outcomes of doing this is to be favorable. So this outcome often relates to their self-identity and whether knowledge sharing uh, will add to their social capital online. And perhaps when you look at Facebook, uh, one of the things to think about is, is that the information generally tends to be positive. So Usually you don't see a lot of negative stories appearing on Facebook. Uh, it's all about positive affirmation and the ability to like, like something. So people are looking for positive stories when they go into these social network sites. <clears throat> then we run into the concept of engagement. So consumers, they don't just have relationships with each other, but they also have, they can also have social relationships with brands. And we used to talk about this as being consumer involvement, um, but now we're calling everything uh, engagement. And if we have a look at the definition, we see engagement, the concept that consumers and stakeholders are active participants rather than just being viewers. In business terms, social media enables all users to share their opinions or ideas as the business moves uh, to market. So here, engagement, we're talking about interaction between the social media uh, uh, and the consumers. And uh, so this two-way communication. If we talk about the Advertising Research found Foundation uh, definition of engagement, it's turning on a prospect to be brand idea enhanced by the surrounding uh, content. <clears throat> so we talk about a consumer being turned on when a meaningful frame of reference is activated in a way that's personally relevant. So we can see that there are two major antecedents <clears throat> for the concept of social media engagement. One is personal relevance and the second one is context. So if it's not relevant uh, to you, you won't engage. 
if uh, the context is not relevant, such as the situation, and maybe close to Christmas or there's a birthday, etc., uh, then there'll be engagement. So without these two two factors, it's unlikely that there will be consumer engagement on social network sites. An example of consumer engagement in the textbook relates to the National Parks and Wildlife Society. You can see we've got a URL. It talks about, it's a game. It's called the WilderQuest uh, game. <clears throat> there are alternatives to the engagement model, and basically we have we talk about um, circles of engagement, and so we we can choose uh, to engage, uh, we can share, and then we can commit, and in the middle we feel we feel something, and th there needs to be some kind of engagement theme, and the outcome of engagement wow. is uh, the cost per click, the sales. Uh, etc. Et and if we have a look at some of the measurements of engagement, uh, the typical kinds of measurements for engagement as a consequence of marketing communications are uh, attention, recall, recognition, memory, brand loyalty and audience measurement data. So the, the outcome of the engagement is measured but not actually the engagement itself. One of the things about measuring engagement uh, is that really most of the statistical measures available are, are quantitative, whereas um, a big trend these days is to uh, measure the context of engagement through using unstructured textual data uh, and use it, using the programs available to see uh, through sentiment analysis actually the qualitative aspects of engagement rather than or, or adding to the, the quantitative information which is available. <clears throat> in Australia some of the typical uh, social media platforms used uh, and you can find this information in the latest uh, census.com.au 2017 report. So we can see that 94% use Facebook, 51% use uh, YouTube and Snapchat, Twitter is used by 32%, 18% use LinkedIn uh, uh, etc. Et so let's have a look at the number of friends, contacts and followers on social media platforms used, used in Australia. So we know that the average user of Facebook has 234 Facebook friends. Uh, and we see that the biggest users are 30 to, nine, 30 to 39 year olds. So there's a general tendency for uh, those in the middle age bracket, 30 to 39, to uh, have high levels of Facebook usage. As for uh, LinkedIn, though, the majority of users are in the 50 to 64 year age group with an average of 274 uh, users. Twitter tends to be uh, into the 18 to 29 year age group. Instagram into the 18 to 29 year age group. And we can see that the average usage amongst uh, all age groups has been um, increasing significantly, whereas in uh, 2017, the average overall for these, for these six sites was 522 users for men and 418. So men are bigger users of social media than women. Uh, the highest level of usage is amongst the 18 to 20, 29 year age group. However, if we have a look at uh, LinkedIn, for example, the highest level of usage uh, is uh, also amongst the 18 to 20, 29, but, but more heavily involved in the 50 to 64 year age group. <clears throat> if we look at the devices used to access social media in Australia, 81% of people use smartphones to ac access social media. So when you have a look at the statistics, uh, there's a fair degree of similarity uh, between males and females, except tablets, more, more women than men use tablets, um, more men use desktop computers, uh, and 
slightly more menus, uh, laptop, laptop computers. So if you look by uh, age group, you can see that uh, the level of usage is negatively correlated with, uh, with, with age, uh, apart from desktop computer usage, where the highest, use, the highest percentage of users are in the 50 to 64 age group. So you can see in, in terms of devices used to access social, social media, there's been a gradual increase in the use of smartphones from 34% in 2011 to 81% in 2017. Laptop computers are gradually declined in usage. There's been a, a, a leveling off, a slight decrease in the use of tablets. So tablets are becoming less, less popular. Uh, and uh, there's been a significant drop off in the usage of desktop computers uh, over, over recent years. <clears throat> if we talk about the interaction with brands on social, social media. And so one of the questions asked was, are you more likely to trust the brand? Uh, and we have a look at the differences between 2.16 and 2.17. So we can see that um, that the more followers you have across sites, the more likely you are to trust the brand. Uh, the more uh, the, uh, the more that the customers interact in a positive way, the more likely you are to trust the brand. And also, the more that brands update their content, the more likely you are to trust the brand. We can see that there's a small number of people, like 8% followed at least one company or brand on social media in the three months prior to the survey, which compares um, with 11% uh, back in 2016. So if we talk about trust in social media as a news source, so the question was asked, which of these three sources do you trust most for, for, for news? 82% trust traditional news sources such as radio, TV and print. However, only 12% trust the news sources on social media. So you can see that social media have a long way to go in order to garner the trust of the average uh, con consumer. <clears throat> and we see that females uh, tend to be uh, more trusting of traditional news sources than, than, than males. So when we have a look at some of the traditional media platforms, Facebook, 97% uh, of social media users uh, tend to use um, uh, Facebook. So it's the, the most basic way to incorporate Facebook into a brand's digital strategy. And the best way to do this is through a brand page. You can use Facebook to target your users through location demographics, and you can you can use this to advertise uh, with with uh, various consumers. There's Facebook Ad Exchange, which is used to uh, for real time bidding. So I think we've been pretty much been through this through through the social media platforms with um, uh, HubSpot, LinkedIn. It's a professional network. It helps professionals stay linked in with their contacts in industry. It's also a pretty good way of developing a resume as well. So when we have a look at Instagram, for example, notice on Instagram photos showing faces get 38% more likes than photos not showing faces. And I think the same applies on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. If you show, if you can engage with people more by showing photographs, you, uh, you'll get more uh, usage. So we have 28% of adult internet users use Instagram. Um, nearly 60% use it on a daily basis, and 35% visit it several times a day. There's 500 million monthly active users with more than 95 million photographs shared every day. Okay, blogs have been around for quite a while. 
they're internet-based journals, uh, chronologically uh, arranged in reverse uh, order. Blogs have been classified in terms of their orientation. They can be personal versus topical, or, can, or you can have community blogs versus individual blogs. So McCann Erickson in 2008 suggested that blogs were a global mainstream medium uh, and the blog sphere is uh, huge. Um, some bloggers are paid by companies. Um, uh, the bloggers own opinions. So the trouble is that they may not be uh, positive for, for, the, for your brand. So online blogs and reviews uh, remain a fairly widespread influence uh, with 60% of social media users claiming to have read reviews before they make a purchase. This is particularly so in, in the tourism area. So you can see that 58% will look up to five reviews before making a decision. So this result came out of the, um, the Census Social Media Report for 2017 and this is a very good report that comes out on an annual basis looking at social media trends in Australia. So you can see that uh, the use of online reviews or, or blogs. Um, however, <clears throat> what's interesting is that the percentage of people who read online reviews or blogs has fallen from 60% to 44%. And so you can see that the trends between uh, 2011 and 2017, but there was a huge decrease from 2016 to 2017, whereas in total, the percentage of people who uh, read online reviews dropped from 60% in 2016 to 44%. The same applied, so the biggest uh, decreases were, were females using less and the biggest decrease in terms of demographics were those those people aged between 18 to 29 where the usage dropped from uh, of online blogs and reviews from 59% down to 19. <clears throat> if we talk about microblogging, and essentially we're talking about uh, Twitter, the, the Twitter sphere, using short sentences, using short videos and the individual images. And as I said, Twitter is the most famous example. So why do we tweet? So basically, some of the major reasons identified for tweeting are social interaction, information sharing, incentive seeking, entertainment seeking, and brand likability. So we talk about some of the statistics presented by HubSpot. So we see that 23% of adult users use Twitter. So 30% of online adults use uh, uh, under 50 use Twitter compared with 11% of online adults age 50 or over. So the, the, the thing about Twitter is that nearly four times as many users uh, internationally use Twitter as in the US. So we know that content consumption has increased in Twitter and all major uh, social media network platforms. There's about 300 million, more than 300 million monthly active users of Twitter. And one of the major things about marketing is word of mouth, and particularly if we start talking about electronic word of mouth. And when we, well, let's talk about what we mean. It's generally spoken communication when product information and opinion is spread from friend to friend, given the endorsement of a personal recommendation. So we know that when it becomes e-word e of mouth, <coughs> the, the, um, the impact can be dramatic. E-word of mouth is different from user-generated content in that e-word of mouth is conveyed rather than generated. It's powerful, and the, the things which make it powerful are consumers believe that other consumers are more likely to give them the whole story not just the positive spin. So they think that they can get a more honest approach. They value other consumers' experience and they trust e-word of mouth, regardless of whether it's positive or negative. So the argument here is that e-word of mouth is more important to consumers than advertising. And this is when we 
uh, start to look for, for some of the opinion leaders. And this is one of the the most powerful reasons for using blogs, because often the major blogs can act as, as uh, opinion leaders. So this is when we <clears throat> when we think about a word of mouth, we start to get into the idea of a zero moment of truth. And the first moment of truth amongst uh, mobile consumers is what people are saying about a product rather than we first see or pick it up or try the product first hand. So with zero moments of truth, um, it's becoming much more important. So we have a stimulus such as an ad. There's the first moment of truth. You see the product and then the second moment of truth when you experience it. And then there's the online information which is fed into consumers and then they they uh, uh, exhibit their first moment of truth and then when they experience that product the feedback goes back uh, in into the into the um, uh, into the online environment and continues to have feedback mechanisms uh, affect affecting ongoing attitudes uh, over a period of time <clears throat> With uh, If we have a look at the different types of e-word of mouth, we can see platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, blogs, online brand communities. Uh, these enable um, companies to mobilize opinion for their own brands. Now, the two major uh, and most credible platforms for spreading information and opinion are consumer online reviews, uh, and also viral uh, advertising, which is unpaid peer-to-peer -peer communication of provocative content. Opinion leaders usually have a deep knowledge in a specialised area. They're sharing this knowledge and it impacts on others' consumers. Also, we have media mavens or experts in their particular field. And they might have a more general or broader knowledge. They're spreading marketplace information through face-to-face -face communication. Um, media mavens are opinion leaders who are less price sensitive. Um, uh, and um, market mavens are often are seeking the best value for money. So remember that, okay, we have social media, but don't underestimate the importance of television advertising because it still drives 51% of word of mouth. Um, and the textbook talks about a, a new ice cream by Streets in 2011, encouraged viewers to communicate with their friends on social, social media. Now remember, television advertising alone drives 51% of word of mouth. And so you can have a look at the, the, the YouTube uh, example. And uh, if we just click on that now.
<clears throat> so sorry about that first um, uh, ad that came along, but uh, I mean, basically, it's it's um, this uh, ad by streets even though it's back in 2011 trying to encourage viewers to communicate with their friends uh, in in social media now we start to have a look at the motivations and forwarding intention so motivations for forwarding on email are pleasure it's fun and thoughtfulness to help others Consumers who post online reviews are motivated by the desire for social interaction, the reward for economic incentives, concern for other consumers, and the desire to enhance their own self-worth. Altruism and also the strength of ties, including the social and emotional closeness between a person and others in the network, are also significant predictors of the willingness to share on Facebook. So this suggests that people that share content with others because they gain intrinsic satisfaction also from helping others. So we wind up with extrinsic motivations and extrinsic motivation. So in, intrinsic motivation is engaging in an activity for its, for its own sake, out of interest or pleasure. Extrinsic motivation is engaging in, in the activity because of the outcomes or reciprocal benefits such as enhanced reputation. When we look at social media analytics, <coughs> there's still um, the majority of analytics focus on quantitative aspects. So we know that um, social media campaigns can be engaging and entertaining. They can almost compel people to share um, I suppose the uh, the true measure is whether or not it achieves it, it achieves uh, its objectives. And then, I mean, even on Google Analytics, there are there are more than two hundred measures of um, social media analytics. Some of the major um, benchmarking metrics used are awareness, appreciation, action, and advocacy. <clears throat> Some of the major uh, analytics used, uh, social reach, influence, uh, and looking at the extended network. So looking, for example, at the, at the cumulative number of members reached. Social media, overall, uh, it's, we know it's increasing in consumption and importance in, in people's lives throughout the world. Businesses have switched on to uh, advertising and promoting their brands through social media, but it still lags uh, behind consumer usage. There's been a dramatic increase in social media advertising during the last couple of years, uh, and um, some of it we don't notice, others we can't avoid. Uh, there's been ad, uh, ad blockers uh, used on on various various sites to try and remove the influence of, of advertising. To some extent, this has been successful, but still, um, uh, I think there's a long way to go. We know that uh, consumers are becoming increasingly turned off through the use of um, uh, of advertising on social networking sites. Some of the theories that we looked at uh, during the session were self-congruity, self-image, self-enhancement, social capital, self-efficacy and, and engagement. And we've taken a look at some of the latest statistics in terms of social media platforms that can be utilised as, as part of a strategy. Again, thanks for watching and uh, uh, see you next time. Bye for now.